right. We are waiting for Rose from QPC. So we're gonna be talking about herb supply today. A lot of great questions came up. Let's wait for her to join. Great. Perfect. Yay! Hey. How Hello. are you? Good. And you, I stay so I can have this behind me. <laughs> I know. I was like, isn't that appropriate? <laughs> so perfect. I was like, I, I get to leave our office early for once early, but I was like, no, I'm going to stay back because I really need this background. Yeah. And we did end up um, ending on time for the CSOMA uh, mm -hmm. town hall. We had like 3,600 participants, which was amazing. Oh my God. And people had so many questions about what's going on with herbs, what, you know, rules, the regulations, but also the stock. Um, so I'm excited. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, but I'm like happy to see your face. How's it been going? You guys have been probably really overrun with everything. So um, I, I, I thought I was like, okay, maybe when this pandemic happened, maybe we'll have some chill time since the beginning of the year to kind of work through a couple of the things, um, that we're working with, working on a couple of the marketing projects we're dealing with instead we've been typing orders like no other and um it's exciting that we have someone new that joined our team last week and it was hilarious this is how busy we were um long story short i was supposed to start her on monday i literally called her and said hey we have like 15 orders and there's two people typing it can you come in and just help us type orders because yeah. I don't know what else to do. So that's how busy and, you know, just things spin. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you guys are doing that because I know there are so many patients that need herbs. There are so many practitioners that need herbs. And then even before that, there's distributors who need herbs from you. So, um, you know, we were talking about just those common misconceptions that people have. Um, I think it would really be helpful if we could start by you explaining, um, you know, the difference between manufacturer, distributor, um, and the way that that works, because a lot of people are familiar with KPC products. A lot of students have them from their school clinics or, you know, practitioners get them in their offices. But can you explain uh, the difference in that uh, supply chain and how that works with manufacturing versus distributing and where you guys fall? Perfect. That's a great, um, that's a great question. So first thing I have to say, we obviously get a lot of questions about how come I can't purchase directly from KPC? I want to open an account with you and you refuse to sell to me. Um, I have to clarify that we love all our practitioners. We love partnering with practitioners. Um, the reason we separate and the reason we operate our business in the sense that I operate as a wholesaler focusing on OEM orders focusing on importing products to ensure that my distributor get the products that they need to then sell it to the practitioners. A lot of my uh, distributors have on-site herbalists that can help in case there are questions that needed to be answered at that moment, at that second for that practitioner. I operate in a different model where I have consultants that I work with, but they only come in on a weekly basis. So sometimes your questions might not be able to get answered right away. Additionally, um, if I put too many eggs in one basket, um, if I'm just trying to sell to practitioners and answering questions for practitioner, and at the same time trying to figure out all the changing um, regulations with importation, then we feel like as a, as a company that we won't be able to get the product in as quickly as we can and also as efficiently as we can. So that's why we always defer our practitioner to purchase from Crane Herb or from Golden Flower or from Four Season Herbs. So, so then they can help assist with the needs that you guys have or the practitioner have while I focus on um, getting the products in and making sure I meet the FDA regulations that requires me to import these products. Okay, so to clarify with that, um, you know, you guys, I, I've used your product for years. I've consulted for you guys as well. 
um, you know, KPC is manufactured in Taiwan. And then Correct. you have a facility here in Irvine, California that you import product into. But you are not direct selling to practitioners. You have incredible distributors like Crane, um, like Golden Flower, that you can then give those products to. And they are the ones who directly sell to um, practitioners. So it's a matter of you wanting to stay hyper-focused on the quality of the herbs, the proper importation of the herbs, making sure that all of that is a okay streamlined, and then the distributors can do their job as that next point of contact for practitioners who need products directly. Correct. I want to make that sure is I'm correct. You are exactly correct. And then, um, of course, you guys are more than welcome to call me if you have questions regarding manufacturing side. So, if you have questions regarding um, how herbs are made, what are the testing or quality control we have implemented to ensure that we deliver safe and um, safe and efficient products to you, then definitely I will be the one to answer the questions for you. And if I can't answer it, then I will be definitely be in touch with our manufacturing plant in Taiwan to be able to answer those questions for you. Okay. And so your I know your main distributors are Crane Herb. Um, golden flower and then four seasons if you are um, a little more local in the California area um, but you do have some limited supply through LASA OMS as well um, is there anyone else that um, you know you might not be able to get the full line of KPC products from but there are products there because you know we have people watching from all over the country so some of it's kind of regional um, but who uh, are the main distributors and then who are, you know, more satellite distributors or whole country distributors that we could be looking at? So our main distributors are Crane Herb, Crane West, uh, Crane Herb, Crane West, and also Golden Flower and Four Seasons. Um, Lhasa is essentially has some of our product line, but they don't have the full product line because they are not really a full partnership distribution with us. Um, each of just really focus on different things. So um, Four Seasons are mainly servicing practitioners who really wants to just to be able to speak Mandarin because some practitioners still customize to ordering in ordering products in Mandarin. Four uh, Golden Flower has their own product line, which is their um, Golden Flower OEM products that we make for them. So there are practitioners who are looking for more customized Xiao Wei Xiao San or customized Yi Ping Feng San. Then definitely they're the best to reach out. They're in New Mexico um, area. Crane Herb and Crane West operates very differently. They are not only a distributor, but they are also a compounding pharmacy. So there are practitioners who are looking to compound or make um, special custom formulas for their practitioner. That is the direction, and that will be the person that will be at uh, the company I will always refer to. And I would say right now, they are a great resource because the way our herbs are limited right now because everybody is stockpiling all these herbs in their clinics. If you're looking for customized formulas, then Crane Herb and Crane West Company are who you should reach out to to be able to get those custom formulas or formulas that you want to be able to make it your own for your patients. Okay. I love how you spoke to kind of the difference with your different distributors. Like I think um, Lhasa is a really great source. Like when I have to go and get my needles and acupuncture supplies and there are some quick formulas I want to throw into my cart, I love, you know, being able to go through them. But particularly at this time, you know, you want to have all of these different resources, um, you know, in the front of your mind so that you can pick the most appropriate person to go to because, yeah, we are having this shortage of herbs. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to a little bit about specific timeline for getting things in from Taiwan for some of these formulas that, um, you know, like you ping pong, some, like the ones that everyone's buying off the shelves. Unfortunately, there is <laughs> more than toilet paper hoarding going on. Yes, there is definitely. herb hoarding going on in our industry. Um, and we're going to address some of the solutions to that as well. But I wanted you being that point of contact as a manufacturer um, to just kind of get a timeline on some of those important formulas that people are concerned about. What are the updates? So this is a good question. Um, so first and foremost, most of our herbs um, does come from China. 
So with China being in lockdown, of course, there's a limited supply of raw material. What KP has done is we have done a really good job in ensuring that we have enough raw material to sustain us for at least the next year or so. So that's definitely not a problem. But because everybody is hoarding herbs, um, the supplies are coming in a little bit slower. So this is not just a U.S. problem. It's a central worldwide problem. So mm -hmm. the practitioners in Taiwan are doing the same thing, and they're essentially fighting inventory with us. Um, I do have inventory still. I first and foremost want to clarify that. We do have incoming shipments, a couple of them coming in, so in, in the next few weeks. And, of course, we always do forecasts and plannings that consistently will have products coming in. So that's why I always want to say to a practitioner, don't stock up um, – of course, I want you to sell my herbs. I want you to buy my herbs. But don't overstock in a sense that you're hoarding herbs to, for the next 12 months or some are even doing it the next two years. Um, mm -hmm. Herbs does expire. They have expiration date. So buy them, maybe stock them for the next six months if you are concerned about not having enough supplies for your patients. But there are always shipments coming in, and we have just incoming shipments in the next few weeks that are going to have Yiping Feng San, Ren Shen Bai Duing, you know, Ying Chao San, all those formulas that are commonly being fought over right now or popular form is being fought over right now. So I would say right now, um, to me, it's not a concern. I can't speak about other countries. And China is also opening, slowly opening up their ports with letting raw herbs go into Taiwan and also go into other part of a country. So there is n nothing to be scared about, or there's not going to be a resource scarce for that sense of herbs. And then can you speak a little bit to the testing? Because, you know, with this coronavirus, everyone has gotten, you know, <laughs> terrified about where are things coming from, even boxes being shipped uh, on Amazon, people are worried about contamination. Um, I'm very familiar with how stringent your testing procedures are and that that's done in Taiwan in a pharmaceutical grade. But can you speak a little bit to that and any um, you know, additional things that you've put into place or, you know, what that testing normally looks like? I love you ask that question because the number one question that I get on the phone right now is, is your herb contaminated with coronavirus? How can I be sure that your herb is not infected? So first and foremost, we do have different certifications that has to follow by the GMP. So that means it's good manufacturing process. So when you cook this herb, as you guys know, virus cannot sustain in high heat. So when we're cooking these herbs, they're first and foremost cooked in a very high heat. So if they're cooked in a high heat, the viruses or the bacteria is already being cooked out. Okay, because they are killed in a sense. They are sanitized in a sense in this really high temperature cooking pot. Additionally, um, if there are any of our staff that is sick or that is not following the good manufacturing process, then they're, of course, not allowed to be in our manufacturing plant. And this is not just we say we are following the good um, GMP process. We consistently and constantly and on a yearly basis has someone that comes and evaluate our manufacturing plants to make sure all those hygienes, all those um, concerns of viruses or concerns of um, microbiomes or salmonella, all those are being tested. So our product does go from beginning process, they test for all the different microbiomes and in between, so when it finished granulation, it's also being tested again for different microbial, heavy metal, and also TLCs. And then at the end of it, finished product, after we bottle, we test again. So there are many different sets of tests that we have to follow through and know hereby before the products even get here. Okay. I love that too because when you hear people speaking to, oh, we've had to make all these changes to protect against the current situation, that always makes me question things because I think, well, how, how sustainable will that safety be after this is all done and people are not as concerned? It's really exciting to hear, 
you know, no, we're already operating within these guidelines. We've already been in a place where we're making sure that our product is safe and it's tested multiple times and, you know, it's safe for practitioners, for patients, mm -hmm. anyone who to consume it, um, because that sustainability really does need to be there beyond the current global situation that we're experiencing. Correct. So, and then, your... and then when, when, and I guess this is why I'm a little bit more surprised when people call me and ask me and it's like, well, how can I be sure your product is not contaminated with coronavirus? And to me, I'm so used to operating in a way our manufacturing is so used to and so accustomed to operating this way, like making sure everything is tested, making sure everything is sanitized, making sure no herbs have cross contamination for the past 30, 40 years. So when people ask me this question, it's like, well, how can you be sure your herbs are not um, containing anything that shouldn't be in there? I'm like, I don't understand your question. Shouldn't this, shouldn't, isn't this just a normal way of making herbs? But I right. guess some is not, you know, but for right. us, it's normal. It's our standard. And I mean, as it should be. And I think that that's a reality check for all of us. We're all having to answer questions that we're surprised by, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, we're, we're learning a lot about what is on everyone's minds, what's everyone's, you know, concern right now. So we're all kind of having to adapt within that same thing where we're like, well, we were always paying attention to this. Like when hand washing became the trend of 2020 <laughs> yes. and I said, well, I, I was already washing my hands like 30 times a day as an acupuncturist. <laughs> So, yes. um, you know, we're all kind of having to adjust and realize that some concepts are novel for people and some, you know, aren't. Um, I want to talk, you know, like you said, people are hoarding herbs um, <laughs> about kind of some solutions, because I think what's been very surprising to me is that we're almost forgetting the beautiful customization piece of Chinese yes. medicine and a true pattern diagnosis, right? Like, yes, you ping feng song is not the only solution for boosting immunity. Um, it's a great kind of blanket formula. Um, but that's really not how Chinese medicine works in its most like beautiful, organic, and effective way, right? <laughs> yes. And I love you mentioned that it's because <clears throat> my phone has been exploded for, I, I guess on internet is so easy to get information. Like because of coronavirus, please take Yu Ping Feng San, please take Ying Chao San. And then patients call me or practitioner call me asking, how can you run out of this herb everybody is asking for? But then they really forget like what you said. You know, Yu Ping Feng San may not be suitable for every single body symptom. Ying Chao San is probably the wrong herbs to take right now for a lot of the people. So you need to go see your practitioner. You can't get so stuck on one herb because you read it online and think that this is the herb for all or for everybody for your family to take. My body type is very different for sure for, um, than other people. So I know... Um, Dr. Chang, who's, you know, now knows is, knows my body has always been very cold. So for me, she tends to give me warm body herbs that can warm up my body to help me fight these flu symptoms that I may have. But if I don't know, I would probably just take Jia Wei Xiao San all day. Um, it is a great formula, but it might not be the best for me. So when the practitioner, you need to be looking at other herbs, digging into the books a little bit and figuring out, is there another herb that's more suitable or is perhaps there's a substitution out there? And this is why I always encourage once again to use Crane West or Crane Herb because they have single herbs that they can compound for you for that patient that maybe looking at a different formula that may need something a little bit different than the standard. Here's a bottle of Yu Ping Feng San. Here you go. Take it. Cause that herb might not be the most, that herb might not be the best for that person. Right. And those also, you know, when you go to Crane, cause there's a lot of resources there too. You know, I think a lot of us as practitioners, 
you know, we get caught up in the day to day, you're not always going back to those source books and continuing to learn. Yes. Um, but even if you go on a uh, crane herb and you're doing a custom formula, a lot of times, you know, you can make a custom formula that has a patent base. So something that's similar to you ping Fung sun, and then you're doing the research and you're seeing, okay, how do I customize this? Um, I had just put on my stories today. I ordered two different custom formulas for my partner and myself. And the goal for both of us was, okay, neither of us are sick right now. We both want to make sure we're taking the best care possible of our immune system. Um, how do we keep our system in balance, keep everything boosted properly, and really maintain this optimal health that we're you know, always going for? And they were two different formulas. So we live in the same house, you know, we're like very similar people, um, but that same goal did not translate into same formula. And I think this is a huge opportunity for practitioners out there to dig back into books, to really truly look at what is this patient's underlying deficiency? What is their TCM pattern? Mm -hmm. How can I find a formula that's perfect for them? That's not just what general populace is telling me is a great formula for everybody because good and great are two different things mm -hmm. and functional versus optimal are, are very different. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's I think um, people forget and that Chinese herb is all about modific mo modifications too. How mm -hmm. do you modify an herb? How do you modify a formula so that it's most suited for a person's body type? And we say that so many times at KPC, we have tons of blogs information. And I, I would say eight out of the 10 articles that we have posted, we always say, with everything that we have said, with everything that we have recommended, please be reminded that every single person's body is different. Your symptom is different than mine. Your body symptom, your body dynamic and structure is different than mine. We're not all made the same way. So herbs really need to be customized to be the optimal. So some people I hear, oh, I take this herb and it's not useful at all. It never helps. Then I'm like, well, did you see your practitioner to make sure this is the right herb? No, I read it online. Well, that's great source of information, but how do you know you're taking the right herb? And well, I know my body. Okay, that's great. I, I know I, I understand that. But how do we how do we educate our our pa uh, patients? How does practitioner go out there and educate their patients to let them know? No, it's not one one size fits all. And I right. wish we can be, but um, uh, the, that's how it makes Chinese herb different. It's, it's very different than Western medicine. Let me just give you a title and I'll hope that your symptom goes away. That doesn't work that way. Herbs is not meant to be that way. Right. Symptoms in a Chinese medical pattern are going to be based on a pattern. So mm -hmm. it's to an underlying issue. Whereas, you know, taking a Western medication gets rid of a symptom without necessarily addressing yes. the underlying issue. So that's something to really keep in mind. Doesn't mean that there aren't formulas that are going to have a great benefit for people. Um, it just means this is really the time to step up as practitioners. And I think it's also a very exciting time to do that because many practices have closed. Um, I'm still open at the time uh, with California. We're considered essential health care. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of practices have closed or they are only doing telemedicine. So if you were doing telemedicine, um, we just went over some good information with that um, on CSOMA's webinar, uh, which I think you guys could still have access to. It's recorded and we gave some good resources about where to find the information on that to keep it compliant and to bill. But, you know, with telemedicine, that's a perfect opportunity to do herbs and to really get to know a patient. It's a good point of contact for your patients if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, all of these patients I was seeing in the office every few days and now they're not here at all. What do I even say to them? Well, this is a great opportunity to reach out, to connect with your patient, to see if you can help them with an herbal formula because you were trained to do that. And if people are not practicing herbs in their practice, even though it is part of their scope, um, there's so many great resources. Like you guys have a book that you will, it's not for sale, but um, mm -hmm. you'll put 
provided to practitioners, correct, about patent formulas? That is correct. So we have an herb right now that we're developing. It's in the work. I'm really excited to share this too. It's in the works of developing to 165 formulas. But right now we have 35 formulas um, that is available already that um, you can basically reach out to us, contact us on our website, and we'll be more than happy to send you a book. It has modifications and talk about indications or how you can prescribe the herbs or how your patient take the herbs. And just like Nell said, it's not for sale, but we are giving this free resource out to any practitioner who's looking for free resources that they can utilize. I love that. Thank you for bringing that value at this time when we all need to be digging back into our books to get creative and help more people. Um, do you have any last words before we wrap up? Anything you'd like to say before we finish? Just everyone out there. Um, I just, you know, w with this pandemic, um, I think it really gives TCM another light. I really have to say that people are looking at options and it's really exciting opportunity for practitioners because people are starting to realize maybe Western medicine isn't the only way for preventions or the only way to help with um, issues or normal body cons uh, normal concerns or viruses that we have. Um, mm -hmm. It's nice to hear people say, well, I should have listened to my doctors or I should have found another way to better take care of myself because in this time, it's also about self-care. Um, it's not just about, oh, my God, let me, I wish I had done a better way of taking care um, of my body. And I encourage practitioners out there to, um, to just be creative, just like what you have said. You know, be creative. Don't, don't go with the standard of let me give you a bottle of herbs and that it helps hope it works with my patients. Um, with our lack of resource um, or, you know, limited resource, think about other ways to help your patients out. Think about other herbs that can also help them with their overall well-being and health care. And, you know, again, thank you for this opportunity for giving me to share a real concern. I mean, this is a great time for us. We're selling all time high, but at the same time, you know, we're really concerned. Like, we're in this herb world are and they it kind of goes in full circles um in a sense like i'm concerned because i also don't want herbs to go wasted if people are stockpiling and these herbs expire then there are practitioners out there and patients out there who may really need this herb right now so don't just think about think about your think about others and also think about yourself of course okay well, Rose, thank you so much. I want to just end by recapping KPC manufacturers and <laughs> then they have distributors. So um, I am going to keep this up on my stories um, and I'm glad that you guys will have this resource. KPC has an amazing product that you can get through a variety of distributors, Craner for Customs, um, Golden Flower, uh, four seasons if you're closer here in California. So check those out. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and you know, we can point you in the right direction. So Rose, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. And I will thank talk you. To you. Thank you. Bye.